This video is going to show you exactly what's wrong and what we need to do to fix it. Entering game B. Well, come along for the ride and see what game B actually is and how you can help change the world. Huh? Let's move. We haven't much time. T time? For what? Until the parasite takes hold of you again. Parasitic metrics have been using and abusing culture and people for centuries. Like most everyone you know, you have been hijacked by a parasite. The parasite was born of game A, the game you've been playing your whole life. It tells you how to think, feel, and what to do. Now that you are temporarily free of its influence, we'd like to take you on a journey. Uh, a journey? To where? A journey to the rest of your life. To the rest of our collective lives together. To make the world a better place. Instead of parasitic metrics, we can have symbiotic metrics where we all work together to create a more beautiful world that our hearts know is possible. I call this bio. There's many different names. Win-win, game B, positive sum metrics. But in order for this to be possible, we all must come together to create our future. A journey to game B. The journey to game B is a story about the relationship between humanity, technology, and nature. It's a story not only about survival, but the potential for thriving. You and your tribe will be among the first people to play Game B. See, in our current culture, there's a lot of this or that. Technology or nature. Are we going to stray towards the technological side, where we download our consciousness, where we rely on technology for things? Are we going to stray towards nature where we don't have any influence of technology, where we come in symbiotic relationship with the natural world? The proposition is that we have a mixture of both of these, a mixture of nature and a mixture of technology to come in collaboration and symbiotic nature with earth and with technology to create a better future for all of us living on the planet, a sustainable future, a future for our kids, for our grandchildren, for our grandchildren's children, a future where everybody can realize their full potential. We have traced our steps back to the beginning, just before the dawn of human civilization. Before game A, there was the first game, how did we get here? Let's watch and find out. The first game was our most enduring and successful game. A game we played for over 100,000 years. Our nomadic ancestors stood apart from their natural cohabitants in their special ability to adapt across all bioregions of the earth. The key to their adaptability was culture, a new strategy for group cooperation. These early nomadic cultures operated within principles of wholeness and regeneration. They were in harmony with natural cycles. Everything is a cycle. And if we can realize those cycles and use them to our benefit, we can make the world a better place. The first game was, of course, multiplayer. Each player is necessary to sustain the principle of wholeness by stewarding the cycle of regeneration. Much like if you look at the picture, you'll see the torus. The torus energy field is a donut shape. The beginning and the ending all coming into a singular point. This energy system reflects in all of nature. Some believe it's the key to energy itself. And what plagues us the most is energy. If people had access to free, clean, renewable, sustainable energy across the globe, it would radically shift our culture into a cohesive union. All players must be present and respect each other's roles. 
Of course. I am the sage who seeks truth and ensures its transmission to the coming generations. My wisdom is that of the mind. I am the chief who seeks to build a better world for the coming generations. My wisdom is that of the body and its extensions. I am the matriarch who gives life and purpose to the coming generations. My wisdom is that of the heart. And I am nobody here to inspire and help create a more beautiful world that all of our hearts know is possible. As a game B pioneer, you must do what is yours to do and bring together all of the necessary roles to sustain the principles of wholeness and regeneration. The parasite, it's waking up. We have to hurry. You mustn't allow the creature to take hold. Breathe deeply and keep your wisdom centers open. The parasite has a hold on all of us right now. Social media is perpetuated by dopamine feedback loops. The feedback loops are perpetuated by our own actions. Each thing that we like, we are creating a feedback loop. And a lot of people are stuck in their own perpetuated cycles of dopamine hits because nobody wants their dopamine addiction to go away. This system is not sustainable and it doesn't lead to a very pretty place. Nature's abundance functions in a constant state of regenerative motion. This is wholeness. As stewards, all players in the human tribe must move with nature's cycles, as our nomadic ancestors once did. Much like the Taurus that we talked about earlier, and if you're paying attention, are flashed on the screen as well. Take this talisman. In the first game, Cooperation was the rule within each tribe. By utilizing the co-creative strategy of culture, each player felt a sense of membership and belonging in their tribe. All tribes were indigenous to a specific place on Earth, our bioregions, like here, along the Cascade Range. Each tribe grew niches around the habitats available to it. This is true for all living beings, shelters, tools, weapons, clothing, and medicines, all made from resources that were immediately available to them and skillfully constructed with knowledge of the local plants and animals. This knowledge that's harbored by the natives of Australia, the natives of America, the natives of even Hawaii, and all cultures around the world is still something that we need to study. If we can reflect and absorb the information that these older generations have to teach us. We can learn things like foraging, things like useful medicinal plants, and most importantly, things like community. So we can co-inhabit together. We have an epidemic of loneliness right now. The culture we're building is not conducive to interactions of community. We're separated by cars, by houses, by walls by religion, by ideology, by invisible lines that we set. But we can all come together and realize that we're all human beings living on a rock that's floating through space. And if we realize this, we can create incentives and structures with technology and natural systems in mind to allow for a world in which we all can thrive. Although neighboring tribes were regarded as dangerous, the most resilient of tribes traded goods and knowledge in patterns of both cooperation and competition. For a long time, the number of tribes across all bioregions innately respected the principle of wholeness, so they stayed in a harsh but steady balance with nature. But even nature's bounty has her limits. Over time, the first game became so successful, the number and size of tribes grew large, forcing us into close proximity with one another. Once we were no longer free to roam, we had no choice but to settle in place and competition intensified for nature's bounty. 
a new game emerged. Game A. We're at an inflection point right now. We're either going to change how we live or destroy the planet that we're living on. Here, we stand before the cradle of civilization at the birth of Game A. As competition increased, the tribe began to lose its instinctual ability to sustain the principles of wholeness and regeneration. Game A is the game of growth, rivalry, control, and accumulation. Human settlement meant the accumulation and control of resources, knowledge, and people. The race to accumulate and control accelerated faster and faster, and competition began to dominate cooperation. Though necessary to advance the human tribe, Game A would prove to be fragile. Even the players that depended on each other began to compete with one another. The players assumed control and dominion over nature's land and her bounty and over each other. Before long, culture would be divided into rigid class structures and those with the greatest accumulation sat at the top of an exclusive hierarchy. The funny part is, is we all have the ability to change how we look at things. Every single thing that we look at, or we experience, or we have a hand in, can be looked at with different perspectives. The tool like AI or the tool like the hammer can be used to benefit or destroy. What we do to nature, we do to ourselves. The strategy of culture itself underwent diverse adaptation as empires competed for more and more accumulation and control and killed off those who couldn't or wouldn't play the new game. Exponential growth is not sustainable. In our race to master game A, nature's stewardship was lost. We are not separate from nature. Instead of the pyramid where we're at the top, it should be a circle where we're equal with all the plants and animals in this system, a co-inhabitant of this earth that we all live on. Because Game A's technology takes from nature without bothering to give back, it is fundamentally exploitative. The strategy of rivalry and accumulation led to the exponential development of complicated technologies. Since these technologies require extraction from the geosphere, eventually they become lethal to the biosphere. Finite resources cannot exist in an infinite game. Yes, competition is good on some level, and it's healthy as well, but we need to look at the infinite game, the game that allows us to live on allows our children to live on. The game that's not looked at with winners or losers, but looked at with constant improvement. The Japanese have a word for this called Kaizen. As the game continues to advance, our global ecosystems are collapsing. All the while, our technologies are gaining the potential for destruction and depletion on a vast scale. And I want you, Yes, the one that's looking at this right now, you, to help me, help all the people that are willing and ready to create a new system. Compared to the first game, however, game A is young and its players are novice. When the principles of wholeness and regeneration are abandoned, there is only one fate, self-termination. Indeed, all empires since the beginning of Game A have risen only to later be forced into disintegration. What's that old saying? The definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and over again? Do we really want to end culture? To end the massive amount of life that we have on this planet? Not just animals, but humans? Is there another way? Can you help? Can I help? Can we all come together? The pattern is clear now. We must play a new game if we are to survive and thrive. Game B. Wait, does that mean going back to the first game? 
no, the only way out is through. It is very important that we must take what we have learned from game A, then once again move to sustain the principles of wholeness and regeneration. A parasite you carry with you is an object of control and blind adherence to the rules of game A. It was set upon you in your earliest years. The parasite makes sure that you conform to game A by conditioning you to view yourself as separate from nature and from other people so that you forget the principle of wholeness and your purpose as a steward of the earth. The parasite knows only one god, the modern growth-based economy. But you can free yourself from its grasp. The matriarch is important in this story. I believe the culture that was created in a game A style neglected the matriarch. In order for this to work, we have to embrace masculinity and femininity within all of us to create a more perfect world. The balance of the two sides. By starting with what you did at the outset of this journey, asking more questions than trying to provide answers will open your mind. By first finding what is yours to do, then building meaningful relationships with those whom you need to work with. This will open your heart. And finally, by acting and creating from a place of integrity within your tribe, this will train your body to play game B. The more you keep these wisdom centers open and sustain the principle of wholeness within yourself, your tribe and the world, the less the parasite will have influence over you. I'm not saying I have all the answers. And I'm continuously asking questions, just like you should be. But I believe that one of our biggest things is lack of community. If we create more tight-knit community that's local, I believe it could change the world. But there's many different systems that need to have an open source, and decentralized way of looking at each and every single one of them. For example, food, money. Now let's get into game B. How can we together collectively create this world to live in a symbiotic nature, to bring about bio, to bring about win-win, to bring about positive sum metrics, to bring about the infinite game? Oh, is this game B? The story of Game B is not yet written nor guaranteed, but its potential is real. Now more than ever, the world needs our creativity and stewardship to create the conditions for life to thrive. How exciting is it that we're at an inflection point where we can literally imagine and create the world that lies ahead. We can create a system where there's harmony and balance with natural and technological. I picture it every day. I'd love to see buildings having more plants, more fruit trees, geodesic domes, and more harmony with nature in the building that we do. The challenges that face humanity are far too complex for one person or tribe to fathom. The crises we see, ecological, political, social, and educational are interconnected. To face this meta crisis, we must consciously revitalize our tribe's special ability to adapt quickly with a co-creative strategy of culture. And we must do so in a bioregional mesh network across the globe. Restoring this co-creative engine to the human tribe will once again allow cooperation to outcompete competition leading to an exodus out of game A. Therefore, by the rules of game B, the meta crisis cannot be solved by a single tribe or ideology. The key is to expand our intertribal cooperation to the global scale. And for this, we will need open and decentralized access to our game A technologies, along with a culture rejuvenated by wholeness. Nature creates humans, 
humans create technology, and technology must be used to support the integrity of nature. Cycles within cycles, the Ouroboros, the snake eating its own tail, the torus, where both points emanate from the center and come back to the center. We must together create this world. And I know I don't have all the answers and neither do you, but if we get enough people into this idea, we can change the world. Aim a strategy of driving rivalrous innovation and production while continuing extraction must come to an end. We all know that the world that we're currently living in is not it. So what can we do to create a world that's good for everyone? At the heart of this co-creative strategy of culture is a space to rediscover each other and our relationship with nature. As we learn about our role as stewards, we will revive the principles of wholeness and regeneration. Like our own bodies, the Game B tribe must protect the heart. We start by acting locally while thinking globally. As above, so below. If we can have harmony with our bodies, then we can have harmony with each other we can have harmony with the earth and all of its happenings. Like our nomadic ancestors, our economies become bioregional. This time, however, they are interconnected by a global mesh with the assistance of our technology. Tribe selection is the driving force of human evolution. What will distinguish us from our nomadic ancestors is our cooperation on all scales, from the individual player to the neighborhood, to the village, to the tribe, to the city, to the bioregion, to the globe. The fractal nature on each layer is all important. If you can change yourself, then we can change the world. And someday across the galaxy, like the fungal networks beneath our feet, a rich system of channels for cooperation and movement will enable us to respond to the global challenges we face. Nature already has examples of the answer, but can we come together and allow these lessons to change us, to teach us, to help us grow? The work required to achieve this vision is today incomprehensible. But it is time to play. Every day you must return to the symbol of wholeness to loosen the parasite's grasp. By keeping your wisdom centers open, you can let go of your conditioned ways of being. Lead with your strengths and find others who are committed to do the same. Make sure that your tribe has strengths in all three forms of wisdom and that you respect each other's roles. Then, and only then, can you start to play Game B. Will you help me remove the parasite from the earth, the parasite from culture, and create symbiotic or bio with everything, everyone, in our earth that we live on together? There is a future of thriving that awaits us. It would be a shame. To miss it. Can we move from survival to thriving, sir thrival? Like I've said, I don't have all the answers and I'm continuously asking questions. I want you to ask questions as well. I want us to be able to live in a perfect world. Scratch that, not a perfect world. I want us to live in a place where we can all have the freedom and ability to express our heart's desire. Wouldn't you enjoy to have a place where you can do as you pleased? What if you weren't taxed by the economy, by the place you're living, by the government? We could all better ourselves, better culture, and in turn, better the earth. I'm just one person, but together, the billions of people that live on this rock, 
we can create unfathomable ways of being. Thank you. And I hope to see you fighting the good fight. Playing the finite game of winners and losers so that we can all play the infinite game of continuous improvement. Thank you. And hope to see you next time.